Hello everyone, this is John for PokerVIP.com and welcome to part 15 of the Grinding Tony Bet series, the epic 24 parter playing mixed stakes across Tony Bet. Today we have two 2NL and 100NL game running and I'm on the waiting list for some 10NL and 25NL and also keeping my eye on the 250NL table that may be starting soon, so make sure you hang around for that. Here though we called with Ace4 top left and we check back flop. Um, so many pots that I think will fold. I think if you made it like a normal sizing, I would have gone ahead and floated with my ASI, assuming that it would be the best hand a good amount of time. Uh, but versus the pot size bet with a lot of really bad rivers, we're just going to go ahead and get that up. So this top left table is running basically because of this uh, Bisquick guy, who looks definitely like a weaker player, um, but we'll see what happens when he busts. Hopefully... Nutcracker will hang around. I know he is a reg. I can see him set at some other tables of the uh, higher stakes. Um, just a hold'em guy by the looks of it. But you never know. Some other people may come and join. Leave comments and reviews as always, guys. Here we flop a gut shot. Going to go for a half pot bet. And take it down. Really nice spot for us to go ahead and bet there. Very dry. Going to get a lot of folds. And also, if we do turn that straight or river that straight, it is going to be pretty well hidden. Not going to defend king three. Uh, wouldn't have defended heads up. Um, definitely don't defend uh, multi way. Deuce four. We're going to fold. So two two and L one ten and L and one hundred and L currently. Ace five bottom right. Um, I've actually just made a mistake there. I should have just probably ripped in on him or folded. Um, I've peeled out of a fifteen big blind effective stack with Ace five, and yeah, we're just gonna basically get ripped on a lot there. So that was an error pre flop. I do apologize, guys. I was too busy looking at the lobby. Pot size bet here almost by Biscuit, and he takes it down. So it looks like he's kind of like a Potter. I imagine he's um, not gonna be around for too long. I think it'll probably be a quick game for him. Jack-10, I open blind versus blind. And A7, I min raise the button. Um, thanks as well to any of the YouTubers watching. Some really kind comments. Over the last few parts, I'm really glad you're enjoying the series. Hopefully we can end it on a high. And there's going to be some PLO. And high stakes action towards the end. Jack nine eight overpeel uh, three way. We can opt to fold, but for versus a min raise getting five to one. Definitely fine to just go ahead and call there. And on this board, we're kind of just you know giving up done, and uh, yeah checking down. Ten jack bottom right have been three bet. The party started already by the looks of it. People three bet me straight out the gate. And again here we're going to check the jack 9 and fold the 10-6. Going to fold king 3. Like I say, I'm on some more waiting lists. If they do come up, I will go to them. PLO 250 NL game just started. It's a shame that I'm not really a PLO player. And it's a shame that's not a little limit hold'em game. Ace five versus fives here. Five scoops. Going to go ahead and three X open here. I uh, got a twenty five and L game um open, so I'm going to just bring that in. Just give us some variety. So now we've got two ten, twenty five and a hundred. Um, so that's now at the bottom right table. And we can notice a regular there, a Nesto Cell. He seems to be doing well. Sevens, we're just going to bet once he checks and see what happens. He goes for a check call. We turn a flush draw now. We're going to fold this A7 versus a 3 bet. We don't improve on the river. Adamanu is going to have some sort of like Ace 10s or less uh, kicker wise. Um, or maybe some over pairs here. Um, not over pairs, but big pocket pairs like kings, queens, and jacks. So I'm just going to fold. 
I think he was probably just taking a bit of a pot control line though with the hand like ace 10, ace 9. On the flop. Yeah, basically it doubled up. I see, or at least it's stacked doubled. 9, 10, I open flop, top two pair. Pretty wet boards so are going to go ahead for around a 80% size pot bet. Get called twice, and we see a king. Not the best card in the deck, because Jack Queen does improve. But I think for now, we're just going to continue betting. And we'll actually sit out of this um, game after this hand. Not going to be folding versus this guy's stack size. Um, terrible river there again for us. Um, he's going to have counterfeited, counterfeited us a few times. So for me, this is just a check back. And we beat Ace Queen, luckily. And we're going to bring in this 25 and L game. I just really don't like playing 2 and L. Um, I'll only do it if needs must. And I feel a lot of people watching can just learn a lot more from watching these stakes. 8 10 top left. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call and bet flop. So yeah, now it's um, 100 and L, 225 and Ls, and 1 10 and flop though with the 8, you know, protection value. You know, if he folds, that is absolutely fine. If he goes ahead and calls, we can just basically see what we need to do. And if you check raises, we'll be in a pretty interesting spot, but we'll probably just start with a flop call and then go from there on the turns and rivers. Depending on what he does. Three bet top left. Really small sizing by Bisquip. Gets a call. King 3 9, all hearts, and then the 3 on the turn. And it went check check on flop. Interesting hand top right here. Just gets ripped on for 30 bigs with 4s and calls with queens. Bit of a swear. Ooh. Oh, the poker roller coaster. See a couple of pretty hands on the right hand side of the screen. Seven and I'm going to defend versus a min open, and we flop a straight draw, so a good start. Aces, I'm just going to go for a three bet, and I'm just going to keep it as a three X. Even versus this pot size bet, it's a call. Ace king here, we're going to go ahead and raise. Uh, versus this jam, I mean, it's just a fold. He's going to have, like, jack sometimes. He's going to have, like, jack 10. He's going to have lots of hands that basically dominate me and crush my outs. And, yeah, I'm just obviously never getting a good price here with second pair. So Into the muck it goes. I would say he probably just had, like, a scared 10 or, you know, an overpair like jacks or queens there. Just from what I know about players of his, uh, his type, really. Gonna go for a three bet with uh, King Jack versus this short stacker player. I think he's a weaker player, so it's good to isolate, get it heads up versus him. I assume he's gonna call and play very poorly out of position um, the majority of the time, and he can definitely have a much wider range than Jack King. He calls very quick, and we see an ace to three. I'm gonna bet once and be done. He can definitely have some aces, and he can definitely have some sets there. Also, there's just a lot of draws. Going to go ahead and 3-bet the King-Queen. And the 6-8, I'm going to bet once and be done again. On the top left in the 100 hour game. We get called. And like I say, now we're just going to shut down. Been 3-bet with the King-Queen. And I've been 4-bet with the King-Queen. Interesting sizing. Um, so 6-8 I fold, King-Queen I defend. Anything versus this sizing, we have to defend with King-Queen as well. Could be a very awkward spot for us now with the ace. He bets huge. What the hell is that sizing? Like, literally anything he has should not bet that sizing. Um, even a bluff, like, it's just going to cost him way too much in the long run. Uh, I'm going to fold, but I'm really confused with that sizing. It's an absolute bomb on a very dry board. Um, Jack Fosu, I've gone for a 3-bet. And we get a call. And I've popped a flush draw, so we're just going to go ahead and bet. And fold. He actually left after that hand, which is interesting. 
I mean, people play a hand like that. They ever had like the nuts, or it was just their their final bluff of the day. Yeah, I don't understand that size. It's just like one of those spots where, like, say he has a value hand, he's gonna like just not get enough action, and say he's bluffing, he's just rich, risking so much to do it on such a good board for himself that he could bet like so much less. Um, so yeah, interesting. He is a rake. He is a good player. Jack four suited. We bet and took it down on the top left. It's nice when you three bet bluff with junk and flop a flush draw. That is for sure. Three point five x button opens by Bisquit. Um, I'd really love to see that. It just definitely like you know confirms that he is a weaker player. Ace four. I'm gonna peel. King nine. I'm gonna open. I fold the ace four and we're gonna three bet the tens. Not gonna be folding if he wants to wage all of those chips pre flop. I see a really bad flop here. I think we can just check back in position. King ten, bottom left, he limped or he blind posted, so I'm gonna raise and assume he's gonna fold a lot pre. Or post flop, I should be able to win with a lot of C bets. Tens I'm just gonna check again and just trying to get to showdown now. Definitely a line for protection on the turn, but let me just get a check. And wow, this guy's got Deuce Bore off. Wow. That is as bad as it gets. That is as bad as it gets. Ace Queen, I have three bet. Flop really poorly. Going to check, give up. He's going to have lots of suit connectors, pocket pairs that hit this, draws, so. We're just never going to win with a C bet often, and a check raise just won't work either. Get three bet by Biscuit here. Gonna opt to call. Um, pretty loose call actually there versus his stack size. But just considering how weak this player is, definitely fine to go ahead and play out like this in position. Sadly on this board, we're gonna have to fall to his just jam. He's okay, guys. I mean, a lot of you who have watched the previous seasons, we have a guy now who's just trying to go broke. He's just trying to get all of his money in and double up or go broke. So we are definitely gonna watch out for that. And uh, yeah, try and get it before Nutcracker does. The dog eat dog world of poker, basically. Made a, a loose open on the bottom right table, but they all seem quite tight. He's called a 3-bet, which I don't like. On the top left, obviously, I want him to be in the pot to me. 7-10, we're going to bet. You know, when you flop second pair on a web board, it's probably just going to be a good thing to just start off by betting. So we're going to check, and just hope to go to showdown. Oh, but then we hit. Um, I'm going to 3-bet... This guy and I'm just not going to fold with the eights. He's playing way too many pots. Eights are very strong. I like it. The idea of it being heads up versus him. Then I'm going to just bluff here and go. I uh, sorry. I think I'm going to just make it look like a bluff here and go for a pot size raise. If he jams on me, I will fold. But basically, I just want him to think, well, what the hell do you bet flop, check turn and pot river with? It just kind of looks really spewy and weird. So I think I get heroed by like a jack, definitely a king, and sometimes even worse, like a four. Or maybe he was like bluffing with ace high and just decides to call. Um, but I think that just looks like the best sort of like level there is to just like pot because my line just makes no sense at all. So was I really slow playing on that board? Doesn't make sense. So I just have a seven. But he didn't go for it that time. I'd have looked me up pretty light there, put it that way. So this is part, what, 12, 15, part 15, I think I introduced it as. It's really flying over. It's going to be finished soon. Get check potted here. Going to fold. Do beg my pardon about the yawning. I don't know. I've just eaten something and it's made me go super tired. And I promise you, my full attention is in the video. I want to crush these guys. 7 9 suited, I peel with ace 8. I'm going to check. Probably just use this as a bluff catcher. If anyone bets, I can just go ahead and call the ace 8 on the river. 7 9, I quite like a check raise here. That I just like so many good turn cards for us. Like, you know, the 5 of hearts, the 8 of hearts, 10 of hearts, a heart, an 8, a 5. <laughs> you know, there are lots of good turns that we can just continue to barrel on. And it's also good for him to just be, you know, 
he can't now just con you know continually just like see that and just get lots of folds. So that will definitely stick in his mind. I'm gonna fold the ace eight there. I could three bet it, but then I feel like I just get into a really tough out of position spot. Versus Biscuit. On this kind of board, it would be very easy if I three bet. I would bet and then just never fold um, with top um, top two pair or two pair with top kicker, whatever you kids call it nowadays. Sixes, Razy Daisy, isolating in position to get value and to keep the pot heads up. But Mr. Gembleris has called, which normally ruins the fun, but when you flop a set, that fun is no longer ruined. And we're just going to bet 2 into 242. All in here by Mr. Bisquit. Ace on a turn, I mean, this guy cold called, he can have some flushes, but I also think he's just going to have like a lot of like two pairs and pair and a draw. You know, draw type hands. I'm just going to raise, get it in versus him. Just because I feel for him, it's, you know, just not always a flush. And I can't see him having a better set than me. So I want to just go ahead and charge his draws. You know, these guys get very gluey with pairs. Then they certainly get gluey with two pairs. And they definitely get gluey with draws. So the idea was to build the pot there so I could jam river. Didn't work out there. We shall see what he uh, keeps showing up with, though. He likes his pot size bets, does Mr. Biscuit. And he actually gets called down by worse than King Queen. So, nice bet by him there. <laughs> he really got some solid value, to be fair. But he's certainly nothing to be sniffed at. Three bet and a call, ace five nine rainbow. Jack Queen, I'm gonna open under the gun five handed. With two very weak players, Gembalaris and Matalukas. Ten and three, I'm gonna fold. Get called in two spots with the Jack Queen is here, four five six. I mean, certainly versus these two guys' ranges, that really favours them highly over me for hitting the flop. So it's going to be a check give up. And if it checks on a hit jack or a queen on the turn, it'll be a pretty easy call down or sort of, you know, bet situation. Biscuit all in. He just four bet rips 50 bigs, which seems pretty legit. And he actually gets called here. So threes versus ace jack. These guys had run out of patience with one another. Nice. No ace or jack. Damn it. Three. Three. You've always got to root for the underdog. They chop it up there. I think they're both like, yep, this seems like a good situation. Small pair versus a decent ace. No cracker opens pretty much every button. Gonna go for a squeeze here. I don't see Biscuit really peeling these. I'm not too sure he's going to be like just 4-bet jamming here. I feel his normal line would be to 3-bet jam. Um, he does go ahead and call though, and we get a pretty bad flop. But we're going to bet and just see what happens. Yeah, didn't really like this situation. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and fold. Basically, I just didn't see Biscuit really just calling big out of position there. You know, he seems to be like the 3-bet, get it in, pre-flop kind of guy. And then when he does do that, quite surprising. 10 jack, I 3 bet, and again we're just going to bet and hope he folds. But he might just punish us again here. Nope, he, he now does fold. And that's why you just got to keep playing well and keep playing standard guys, because I know it does seem like really hard when someone is just jamming like that to sort of just give up. But when you have a hand with very little equity, but you can rep a decent hand, then you, know, you should probably just go for it. Really good, interesting spot here. Um, and yeah, we can just make this huge and not really care what happens. Not really care what happens, and uh, we will not be folding. If they both fold, you risk 28 to win 16. That seems like a pretty good deal. If they want to get it in, we have King Jack. Again, seems uh, so we have Ace Jack, 
seems like a pretty good deal. So <laughs> I went just for like three and a half X there, which against two people, especially one who loves to peel by looks of it, seems legit. Nice where a hand just can't ever go any way but any way you like it kind of thing. You know, we really were fine with that situation. If they peeled, whatever, we get them to put in a lot of money pre-flop with a hand that we assume is worse than ours, and they're going to be out of position. If they fold, we win lots of money by risking very little um, in comparison. And if they want to get it in, we have an ace and a king. Here we go ahead and three bet big blind versus cut off open here. Open the ace king and just watch this top left table. Interesting raise there on the river, repping a seven. Although we do know it can go thin. Oh, wow, we had kings full. Damn. What the hell is going on? Oh, the other guy had a seven. Whew, I could have got out of control. Ace jack, we're going to go for a very easy peel here. The ace four we gave up on that board. Ace Jack, we flopped top pair, top kicker on a very wet board. So we are just going to see what happens. 8-3, I check versus the limp. He checks. I think he's going to have a, a fairly interesting check raising range here, which will mainly consist of like sets over pairs and draws. But with a hand like this, we're going to have to go ahead and start betting for protection. I'm going to go ahead and re-squeeze the ace-king. He actually folded there. Maybe I don't like... Eights or nines or some like raggy suited ace. But with the ace king, again, that kind of situation is if someone wants to call, fair enough. If they want to get it in, fine. He's actually called. Interesting. Um, and we flop the nuts, really. And we're just going to go super small here. Almost teasing him into the pot. He calls and then turn is just basically... I, I was going to say a jam, but I'm actually not that too concerned about draws because I block them with my king of diamonds. I'm just going to bet small again and just try and get all the money in and, you know, jam any river. I mean, this is the best run out ever. If I'm losing here, I'd be stunned. But it kind of feels like he has ace queen. So I'm just going to shift and get the money in. <laughs> I mean, now he's tanking. Now he's like, oh, my queens aren't good, maybe. Really not too sure what this guy has. But I'm just happy to, like, draw him along. Because we just block, you know, the majority of the draws that you can have, or the draw outs. So, just trying to tease him in with like a worse pair. And he falls the river. Really not too sure what you had. Really no idea. But we got a lot of money there. We just made like seventy big blinds, maybe more. I'm not too sure what you had with uh, the start of the hand. So that's a very good result. Ace King is definitely our friend today. Some Janelle games actually been like really interesting on the top left because normally I'd expect that guy to have bust by now, and he's not playing terrible, you know. But he has definitely sort of like ran into spots where you know we have nothing, and he's just check jamming a little bit too crazily, and not getting caught out basically. Um, so he could have definitely gone the other way for him, but he has not spewed it in the manner I thought he would. He's calling here though. Pot size bet behind, pretty much. He bet in a snap. Oh, wow, King Seven. <laughs> wow, and I was just talking about like how this guy's not spewy, but at the same time, that is one of those again where he just didn't get caught, kind of thing. You know, if that guy just set, you know, gets stacked or whatever, it's just super crazy risky play. Um, we get Pop into here, and we have the nut flush draw, so we're gonna call. We turn a straight draw, which is really good, and I don't mind if he pots it. He actually checks here. I'm not happy to bet. See how this guy likes being pot bit into. Um, you know, basically just wanting to build a pot versus him. Sadly, when we break though, it's going to be a check. This guy doesn't fold, and we can have the best hand sometimes. Um, ah, damn it, <laughs> that would have been a beauty. That would have been a beauty. Jack eight suited. We raise. And get a quick call. We turn the flush. We're going to continue to bet. Ace Jack. We're just going to continue to bet as well. And the Jack Eight. Like I said, now we've turned the flush. We just keep on pumping money in the middle. Biscuit has left now. I think he basically just realised his time was going to be up pretty soon, and it was time to get out of dodge. Um, Ace Jack. I'm going to fold. He's repping a really strong hand. 
And the Jack Ace here, I'm just going to raise it back so I can basically just lead jump the river. And he actually folds, which is interesting. People don't normally bluff raise fold there, so. Fair enough. Get check raised here with my second pair, which I'm just going to fold. And the 10 jack suit, I'm going to continue on a very good flop for us. Top pair, jack kicker, backdoor flush draws. 9 10 suit, I can just call. Don't mind playing multi way. And the rest of it is pretty self explanatory. 8 10 suit, I'm going to call a 3 bet. And I'm happy to play heads up, even though I'm not that well versed of a heads up player. I don't mind for the last five minutes of the video. Um, very easy call here. Like I say, lots of good turns. You know, we have 60% of a straight flush, so never going to be folding. Deuce, not ideal. With his sizing on the flop, it kind of feels like he's pretty nutted. Like a sort of like ace queen type hand, king's aces. <clears throat> and he just knew it was a very dry board and he was just trying to get lots of calls. Um, so yeah, if he checked, it would have just been a check back for me anyway. But once he bets, we are out of there. I imagine he's going to play pretty much every button. I imagine so. Queen six. I'm just going to start by betting. You know, heads up, you can definitely get check called by a pretty wide range. Check raising on this board would be very odd. Um, so I'm not really scared of that. He's just generally going to call or fold. And that's an okay place for us to start. I tend to peel these weakish mid range aces. Interesting flop with second pair, top kicker, and the back dominant flush draw is just going to be a very straightforward check call. And essentially, hope we improve on the turn or, you know, we see some undercards to the seven. We see an undercard to the seven, and it is a diamond. It goes check check, and I'm just gonna check here. I think I can go for like a massive check raise as well. Like I definitely think he can be now like pot controlling a nine or better on the turn. So if he bets, I won't be that comfortable in check calling. I think I've got the best hand, so this would be like a check raise to like thirty five or something. You know, we can have the set, we can have the nut flush. Our line makes complete sense as well. So we're just getting all of this thin value one pair. And it's not that thin value by him, but you know, too thin for him to go ahead and bet call basically. To, to fold, which he did pretty quick. He thought about it for a second, but then thought, you know what? This guy can have it. And he let it go. He's going to bet this flop. Hope see lots of folds. Check the ace three. We'll just go check down here and beat king three. King four, we're going to fold. And we're actually going to start setting out guys to call that a video. We'll play a couple more hands in the top left. I'd like to keep these videos about 30 minutes long. If you guys feel like they need to be longer or shorter, just let me know. Ace eight, second pair, like I say, you know, it's good to just start off by betting these. You know, he can definitely call with worse. Ace on the turn, really good card. I'd imagine we are never beat here. So, I'm just going to keep betting here. He, yeah, check raising would just be very odd, but he can definitely kill, still call us down with his draws. And with like a nine, or maybe an ace that he floated. Going to go ahead and peel the six, seven. Again, flop second pair. We seem to be the second pair flopper of the day. Um, as you guys know, this will be a very easy spot where we just go for a call. Once you check, that's quite interesting. I imagine he's just done with a hand. So I'm going to go ahead and lead here. You know, just basically protect. You know, him folding any two there is fine by me. And we're going to make this the last hand of the video and open with 6 7 on the button. And that is that, guys. That was part 15, I believe. Um, still nine parts to go. 
I hope I see you back here again. Leave some comments and reviews. Um, best of luck on the tables and any questions, like I say, fire them in. This was John for PokerVIP.com. Good luck at the tables.